Dorothy Weil, and I'll be your speaker introducer this afternoon. This session is the last session of the day. It's entitled Business for the 21st Century. We can all agree that our world is changing very fast due to technology and the business world is having to adapt to this change. This session features the perspectives of professionals working in different industries that are changing rapidly. So sit back and enjoy this last session of the day. Our first talk is going to be entitled Today's Technology with Ankur Gopal. Ankur is a graduate of the Ignite Louisville class of 2013, definitely the best class ever. <laughs> Ankur, is also, <laughs> Ankur is also the CEO of Interact, a position he has held since 2011. Interact works with clients all over the U.S. on maximizing mobile technology within their businesses. Ankur is a native of Owensboro, Kentucky, and completed his education by attending Owensboro Catholic High School, the University of Illinois, the University of Dayton, and the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Ankur started his career working for Accenture, and after working there for five years, in 2007, he started a company known as Agent 511, which develops mobile solutions and mobile strategy for its clients. After a few years, Ankur helped create Interapp as a sister company to Agent 511. Interapp is a finalist for the Greater Louisville Inc. Incredible Award for Innovation, Technology, Utilization, and Inclusion. Please welcome to the stage Ankur Gopal. Good afternoon. I know it's the last session. One more time. Good afternoon. All right. Again, thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, my name is Uncle Paul, and today I'm going to talk to you about today's technology. Before we begin, I want to encourage you all to pull out your phones and use your phones throughout this presentation. Uh, if I get boring or something you don't like, find something that you, find something else that interests you. And before we do, I'd like to run an experiment. For those of you who may or may not be familiar with Twitter, uh, the Best of Leadership Summit is trending in Louisville, which means that a ton of people are finding about, about what's going on here right now. So if I can ask you to pull out your phone for a mild experiment, for those of you who know how to use Twitter, there's your hashtags and, your, and, your, uh, and, and the people to tag in your, your tweets. And if you don't know how to do it, just send me an email with a photo or something that you see, take today, and I will respond to you and I'll tell you exactly what that means, and I'll send you some metrics as to show you the trending topic, so at least you'll be familiar with the results, if not the action. So, about me, I uh, started a company, I went to a couple schools, I did a, a number of things before jumping into mobile high tech and wearable technology. So, the idea here is that I'm not here to talk to myself, but I'm more interested to know exactly what it is you all are doing in terms of technology, technology utilization and, and, and innovation within your own companies, large or small, as well as give you some tips and tools to help you get on that roadmap. So, before I start any presentation, I like to set a few goals so there's no, no, uh, there's no uh, question of where we're trying to get to. So the goals for this presentation are this. Number one, I want to demonstrate a couple technologies for you that, might, that you might find interesting. Number two, I'm going to spawn your own creativity about things that you can do within your own enterprise and your own lives. Number three, I'm going to make you all a technology advocate and champion within your companies. And I'm going to give you a tool on top of that to show you for just 15 minutes a week how you can achieve that. And finally, I'm going to try and impress you with something I do here today. So hopefully I accomplish at least a couple of these five. So first off, I'd like to introduce you to my grandmother. My grandmother is, has an iPhone. She beats me in tennis with cheating every now and then. She enjoys the occasional shot of bourbon if you don't tell her what it is she's drinking. And she loves her iPad. All neat little things, but one other thing I didn't mention, my grandmother just turned 88 years old last week. So, there's no excuse for anyone in this room anymore. So, so let's talk about Uncle the Consumer. I'm gonna ask straw poll, how many gadgets am I wearing right now on the, in this photo? Three. Any more? Four? Five. Five. Keep going. I'm actually wearing variants of nine pieces of technology. So the idea here is I'm going to go through some of these innovations and show you the neat things that I have in my house and on my desk and kind of take, take you through a little roadmap of what each one means to me. Number one, Google Glass. I'm wearing it right now. I uh, use it for a number of things. It keeps me hands-free. I can see my 
email, like it's the information right in my eyesight whenever it comes up. Uh, it helps me with facial recognition technology. If I, I can probably determine who all is in this room and who all is there. Uh, it helps me, it gives me tools throughout the day. So I'm gonna do a quick experiment with you. I'm going to take a quick video. And I'm gonna show you exactly what it is. Wait, <laughs> wait too loud. There you go. Number two, my Android phone. Uh, tremendous, please. Everyone can't do it without their phone. I, I hear people say, if I lost my phone, the first thing I do is run out and buy another one. I don't care how much it costs. I think we're all there. You can see why it's valuable. Some good and bad, like everything. You're always connected, you're always available. But you'll always be able to communicate instantly and always get information immediately. The next thing I want to teach you about is AR, artificial intelligence, how this can work to the artificial. Augmented, excuse me, augmented reality, pardon me, AR. Uh, as you can see, an example of that is you'll be able to project a keyboard in air and be able to type and it'll recognize your hand signals. How this is an example of AR when you take this in front of your phone? That's a normal bottle of Jack Daniels. But when you put it with a, 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 AR, you might see something happen. On any one of your products or brands, you can help engage the user and, and help extend his experience by giving them more information right then and there. So if you go to any, so if you go to any uh, liquor store and you put your phone with the AR, augmented reality app called AR on it, you might see my face pop up. Don't worry. There you go. Next up, Hygienics. This is a device that helps me monitor how clean my hands are and how, how uh, hygienic my, I am in the workplace. So it allows me to stave off infectious disease, make sure that they teach me and educate me to make sure that I'm washing my hands enough and make sure I'm, I'm healthy. As you can see, it provides data showing me how much I wash my hands based on the industry averages and based on uh, perhaps the job I'm in. Maybe if I'm in a hospital, I need to wash my hands more. Maybe if I'm in a restaurant, I need to wash my hands more, etc. The main thing here I want to emphasize is data helps change behavior. Leaf, this is really cool. Leaf is turns air into a touch screen. And I'm gonna do a little quick demo with you, if you don't mind. Have every of you seen the movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise? If you have in 2002, this is a very prolific movie that it predicted so many technologies that we use today. So as you can see, for the next few moments, I'm going to channel my inner Tom Cruise and Minority Report. So, bear with me, ready? Hands. My hands are controlled in the air. I'm able to push, pull with one, two, three, four, five. Both hands in. Go back. Yeah. You can see my hands recording my hand movements in midstream and midair, right? So how does this how does this help us? Well, I'll show you why. I'll still go. Excuse me. There we go. And you can see the amount of flexibility and the amount of capabilities it has. So that's leap. My iPad. Simple user interface, everyone can use it. Apple designed this to be simple. So simple, my mother, father, fiance, and grandmother can all use it. And it also allows me to be more productive, and it also helps me make sure that I can mimic the problems that my mother, father, fiance, and grandmother are having about their homes. My Fitbit tracks my daily health, motivates me to help complete fitness goals. And finally, the last piece, I'm not wearing them now, but they're my heated boots, which I just think are really cool, and they were great for this winter, so. So the technology is all here. So this is all neat, on for the consumer. So how does all these neat gadgets that may or may not have any business implications tie into today's topic? Well, so how does on for the consumer turn into on for the leader and executive? And then in that case, you all as a leader and executive. Let's talk, we talked about Google Glass, let's go back through it real quickly. Google Glass can revolutionize the medical industry. There's already pilots being done in numerous hospitals and numerous healthcare facilities around the country. As you can see, a surgeon or a physician who is wearing these are hands-free. They're able to see vital signs and, and information right then and there that are pertinent to their patient and their case. Number two, even consoles and continued visits to be able to track user patient data and making sure that that individual is continually cared for if that's another way to help improve our health outcomes. And it's only for healthcare, right? But I'm gonna challenge you now. What about construction workers, plumbing workers, uh, people in services industries, museums? Everywhere you go, you can tag. You, if I'm having a problem with, uh, with a field visit and I need to contact an expert to take a look at it, 
No longer do I have to wait a day to put on a schedule. I can do it in real time by just clicking two buttons and connecting with them immediately. Training and education. How many things can we actually do in your company that would be able to shorten the training timeline, able to really help get these people keep training better and better working? Sports and coaching. We're working with the University of Louisville on some potential pilot projects as well. And can you imagine if I had a, we had a warehouse this big and I could scan every single barcode, every piece of inventory there in less than a minute instead of hours? That's tremendous on our lot. So you're, you're in, in, your, in your respective companies, you may or may not have champions, you may or may not have uh, resources to do some of this development work, which is kind of what, what we do with a lot of companies. But in-house, there's a lot of things you can do to help promote creativity, do these types of uh, education seminars, t get people in a room and have them hack out a problem very quickly. I talk about hygienics, behavior change. If I know that, I, I, if I work in a hospital, I know that I'm washing my hands only four times in a 10 hour shift, but the average should be done 6.5, I know that I'm gonna improve my health, my, uh, my hygiene and prevent infectious disease, right? But what does this mean? It's just neat. Why do I need to know this? Well, every year there's 100,000 deaths and it's expenditure of over $30 billion just because of unsanitary conditions and these are preventable illnesses. Very big problem, very simple solution. Again, only for healthcare, right? But what about using hygiene for fast food and restaurants? Turning, people don't eat at sea restaurants, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not mistaken. Can you imagine if you were able to take in a solution that does improve the hand health and the hygiene of your institution that goes, goes from C to A increases your customer, your customer satisfaction, and of course, drives to ROI. This is also can be used in the same sort of uh, food processing factories, supermarkets, anywhere where hand hygiene results in the consumer experience or the end game of ROI. Lead motion, I told you something pretty neat there. Hands in, hands out, control things, virtual, virtual reality. What about virtual reality for engineering? If you're able to your, your team of engineers are able to quickly prototype, quickly learn, quickly take things apart. Instead of spending days and, and weeks on simple, simple projects, they can do it in hours. Well, what about fast food restaurants? Having, I mean, if you're using this technology to help train your employees, in industries where you have a tremendous amount of turnover, you can train people quicker in hours versus days and weeks. Again, leading to customer satisfaction and ROI. Same thing, food processing factories, you can use this technology to help drive, help, help create business cases and, and business drivers that will return to your bottom line. My Fitbit, this is great. I'm, I'm putting this on here because it's the only day that I won against all my uh, cousins and family, right? And I, we were very active on it, so that's what, so that shows me how many steps I walked in a seven day period. It shows me the results of calories distance. It showed me I slept for five and a half hours, which is a luxury at these, these days, it seems. So, but what, if those, but what if those healthy outcomes, what if I could take that data and insurance providers gave me a better rate on my insurance plan because I'm healthier than the average person? Resulting in lower insurance costs, resulting in, in, a, in a healthier, out, in, in improved health outcomes. That's the end of the game, right? We talked about AR. And if you mentioned, remember the Jack Daniels experience, that's pretty neat. It may help sell a few more cases. It may help uh, create some brand awareness. But what if you use this to help people get better at their jobs? Creates training scenarios. You create uh, different types of different types of training protocols. Different types of software where it allows them to take on expensive and, and time-consuming tasks in a very short period of time. The biggest problem with all this, as you may be thinking, it was this was expensive. Now it's a couple hours of it's, it's a couple of weeks of work and a couple of pairs of Google Glass and a couple of devices that you can do this in-house and start promoting these types of technology innovations within your company. Okay, great, lots of possibilities, lots of neat stuff, so what? I've got, and I hear this all the time, I've got to focus on my core business, I've got to be, and honestly, I don't know technology and I'm not comfortable with it, but my child or nephew or niece is a whiz at it, so that's something that they do. So what can I do, I mean, what can you do? Number one, lead like an entrepreneur. Constantly learn, surround yourself with the right team. Be bold and creative. Start challenging yourself. Don't necessarily say that's outside of the normal day-to-day -day work that I'm trying to do or not part of our core business because eventually it will become a very important part of your core business. 
Uh, you can see, I like this fail, fail again, fail again, rinse and repeat. Continue this process. So you have to leave like on, be, be creative, be very excited and, and about, the, about the possibilities for your business. And I know you've heard that before, so I'm also gonna spit this slide that most entrepreneurs don't put on. Manage like an executive. Vet the idea. Make sure it has, if there's a business case around it. Make sure that you document what the successes are. What do you expect to get out of the project? How long do you plan on trying this project before you deem it a success or failure? Get team to buy in, and if number one, above all, have an implementation strategy. No one likes to learn new things, especially when they've got 50 other things in their plate. So making this, making this encouraging and making, sorry, excuse me, encouraging and making this pleasurable for your team to do where, oh my gosh, my job just got a lot easier and I'm much more effective. That's the kind of results you want to see. So how do you marry the two? Simple. In your business, here's what you can do. Here's the tool I promise you. Identify the digital champion in the company. Maybe it's you, maybe it's someone with you, but you have to find someone who is going to be on board with this as you are. And number two, determine your strategic projects, determine what you want to do, and, ma and make a plan around two or three things. What we do, consistently email your team and your employees every Friday on some pain point in your company that you'd like to have some sort of technology solution to, be, to address. Uh, ask your team to come with a high-level solution, solution and then email you just a simple email with three things. What's the solution? What's the timeline of this to build something like this or prototype something like this? And what's the cost? Pretty much those are the three main things that I see that we've seen that are decision points for the decision makers. So something you can implement quickly and not just sit on for five, seven, 12 weeks, right? Can, the key word here is consistently. Make sure you put in your schedule on Fridays to do this and have your team do this. Above all, all right. So my final thoughts, and I wanted to just quickly go, through my, I like to have one slide that shows everything. I'm just gonna quickly go through it. Technology has to, has to improve business outcomes, not just be neat. You can have, there's some, uh, you have, leaders have to have a plan to integrate this in their business. Don't be afraid to try things that disrupt. History has shown us the most successful leaders made bold choices. And if you won't do it, your competition will. Technology is not to place jobs. It makes complex jobs easier so people can do more. So don't think that this is a job replacer, it is a job creator. If you don't believe me, how easy this is, and how easy you can do it, ask my grandmother. Thank you all very much, I appreciate your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions outside of the presentation. Good luck to you all. Google glasses on, and we're right here. Just don't have to read this. <laughs> Next up, we have a 